Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and uh, there are multiple issues that are going on here uh, over in Israel. And I uh, want to thank, uh, uh, would like to thank Miss uh, Comrade Colasso uh, for sharing this tw uh, tweet here for me here. Uh, multiple issues, and and I and I don't know for sure exactly why Israeli police are beating up on uh, Palestinian women, uh, but it's nothing unusual. It goes on all the time in Israel. But I can only imagine with these new reforms that Netanyahu is doing and his uh, right wing government, their theocracy, uh, we're going to be see more situations like this. So I want to play this clip here for you, so you can just see exactly. <laughs> What goes on? How Israeli police treat women? Uh, you know, and what, what, what are they going to do? They're going to justify the abuse of these women for uh, what? Were, were, were they beating up the policemen or what? Uh, it doesn't look like it to me. It definitely looks like they overpower them, as usual, as always, and uh, and and sadly, you know, I, I've seen this firsthand. I, I know these things happen. Uh, if, if you're Palestinian, unfortunately, you are you become a target of brutality. Uh, it's very sad. There, there is no justice in the country. And I know a lot of Christians, they look at this and they say, well, you know, but it's what the Palestinians do to the Israelis. Friends, listen, I lived there during the Antifada. I've seen a girl blow herself up. Uh, you know, a Palestinian girl blow herself up. And, you know, I was knocked down from the concussion of the bomb. I, I know what it's like to live under those conditions. But we forget what drove, what has driven the Palestinian people to such extremes. We forget that this land uh, was, you know, uh, you know the, the, the Jewish people from Germany, uh, from, from Europe and, and as a whole, came in and wanting to resettle the land, just basically took the land by force. Uh, I've got good friends who are Israelis that refused to be a part of the crimes that were being done against humanity, even willing to kill their own people. Uh, you know, so it's, it's very sad. Uh, a lot of evil goes on and just people are not aware of it. Uh, also, in another one, I want to thank Sister Rosa for sending some of these things to me here as well. Israel protests for, uh, force Pentagon chief to cut Tel Aviv trip short, Israeli officials say. The planned day of resistance protests over Israeli government's judicial overhaul and expect, expected roadblocks uh, forced Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin to delay his arrival in Israel uh, to Thursday and will, and will confine his visit to a location within the airport grounds, according to Israeli officials. That's how bad the protests have become in Israel. And I know there's a lot of ministers that are playing down the protests. They're making it look like Netanyahu is still the savior of the country. You know, right-wing radicalism is not the savior of the country. It's not. You're not helping the Jewish people by allowing a, a fascist dictatorship to run the nation. Uh, this is right here. Israeli pilots protest Netanyahu's judicial reforms. Let's listen in. They bombed Iraq's nuclear reactor in 1981 and regularly hit Iranian targets in Syria. Yet even some of Israel's revered combat pilots are now firing warning shots, with reservists from one squadron skipping a training session and suggesting they may not heed the call of duty if the government rams through its judicial overhaul. In this country, that's a very big deal. The existence of Israel is based on the Israeli Air Force. Simple as that. Neri Arconi was an Israeli combat pilot for 30 years. He's also a lawyer who warns that if the government continues with plans to neuter the Supreme Court and give itself sweeping powers, the country may be in trouble. Since we are talking only about a few hundreds of people, then if you lose some of them, the mere existence of Israel is essentially degraded. That is why the government and all the people in Israel are very concerned about the protest 
of the Israeli fighter pilots. Israel's defense minister, seen here meeting reservist commanders from the combined services on Tuesday, says he is listening. <laughs> Weeks of street protests in Israel have thus far failed to persuade the government to even pause its judicial reform plans. Could this warning from some of Israel's Air Force pilots, the very people whose job it is to defend Israel's existence, could they have any more luck? Given the current... I highly doubt it's going to have any luck because like I've said the entire time, this is a new world order. Israel is to be the head of the new world order and the law according to what many believe is unfulfilled prophecy, which I disagree with, I believe that Jesus fulfilled those prophecies there, will come from Jerusalem. This is exactly why Israel is pushing for all these reforms going on in the country. And then you also have, too, uh, five former police commissioners demand Netanyahu remove Ben Gavir from office. Ben Gavir is the most radical of them all of uh, Israel's new government there, uh, belonging to some of the most radical groups that's ever been known in all the country's existence. And uh, as we I did that one video with uh, my wife there uh, that's over on her um, Odyssey channel. And don't forget, go to her Odyssey channel, Israeli News Live. Uh, she is posting more independently there now, so you definitely want to check that out. A group of former Israeli police commissioners has demanded Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu remove National Security Minister Itmar ben Gavir from, from his post, saying the far-right lawmaker is acting outside his position, legal uh, per, uh, purview, and risks igniting violence with Palestinians. Well, as we saw already earlier from Comrade uh, Colosso's post right here, that violence is already happening, and uh, no doubt Ben Gavir is the one that is sanctioning this here, this violence against women uh, by uh, Israeli police forces inside of the country there. So it is a major problem of things that are going on. Uh, it goes on five former police commissioners, three former senior officials from the prison service, and dozens of others, uh, uh, ex-law enforcement officials, signed the Tuesday letter to Netanyahu. The signatories included former police commissioner Rani uh, Alashi, Shalomo uh, Ar Arashki, uh, Asaf Hafetz, Rafi Paled, and Moshe Karadi. They said they planned to attend Saturday night anti-government protests in Tel Aviv under the banner, Save the Police from Ben Gavir. That is Israeli speaking. So my Christian friends that I love so dearly realize far greater number of Jews in Israel are against these reforms. Stand with Israel. Stand with the Jewish people that do not want this apartheid type of state being formed uh, in the Middle East there. Uh, by the way, China cut the internet to Taiwan Island, the latest intimidation tactic to force reunification. It says here that China has been accused of cutting the internet to one of Taiwan's outlying islands as part of its latest intimidation tactic to force reunification. Some living in Matsu, close to the neighboring China, were struggling to pay electricity bills, make doctor appointments, or receive packages. And Matsu's 14,000 residents rely on two submarine internet cables leading to Taiwan's main uh, island and the Nation Communications Commission's NCC citing the island's telecom service blamed two Chinese ships for cutting the cables. So there you go right there. As I said before, they're only waiting for the situation in uh, Europe with, with Russia and that of uh, the United States to deepen before China will, or, you know, China will then invade Taiwan. Uh, according to the Zet Online, which is a German news uh, source here, said Nord Stream investigations trace leads to Ukraine. They have identified the boat from which the Nord Stream attacks were carried out. Apparently, it was rented by a company owned by Ukrainians. The German investigation authorities have apparently made a breakthrough in solving the attack on Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipeline after joint research by the ARD Capital Studio and political magazine uh, Constra, uh, Contraste, uh, it was possible to largely reconstruct how, when the explosive attack was prepared in the course of the investigation. And according to Trace's leads in the direction of the Ukraine, however, investigators have not yet found any evidence as to who ordered the destruction of the night of September 26, 2022. Three of the four strands of the Nord Stream and one and two pipelines at the bottom of the Baltic Sea were destroyed by explosions. 
And of course, there's already been a tremendous amount of evidence that points the finger to the United States involvement, uh, even special force units. Uh, that would have been used by the U.S. Also, blame has been blamed on the U.K.'s involvement. So I'm sure if you deal with all three, U.K., U.S., and Ukraine, you've got a pretty big mess on your hands. I'm Stephen Vernon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening tonight. And uh, if you would, I've got a, a dear friend that is um, in very serious condition right now after open heart surgery there. Uh, if you would remember him in prayer, a uh, very good friend of mine, uh, won't mention any names or anything, but uh, please, uh, be, be, if you would keep in prayer, you can just say Steve's friend when you're praying to the Lord, he knows who it is, and uh, I would appreciate that as well as for his family, uh, his wife and his son who love him dearly, uh, just be in prayer for them all. Thank you and God bless you.